By year three, children need to know um, a method of recording multiplication for questions that are too difficult to do mentally. And typically, this is the grid method. So if faced with a calculation, for example, 3 times 29, which might be too hard to do in mental, using mental strategies, the number can be split into 3 times 20 plus 3 times 9. And the grid method helps with the setting out. So for example, I put the 3 here. I split the 20 into 20 and 9. So obviously this method requires a good working knowledge of place value. And once I've done that, then I can do the separate calculations. 3 times 20 is 60. 3 nines are 27. Once I've done those two separate calculations, I can then combine them to find the total. There are many ways you could set this out. It could be set out as an addition, um, using an addition algorithm, but I can do this quite easy mentally. So 60 plus 27 more is going to give me 87. The method can then be adapted to slightly larger calculations. For example, 7 times 156. This would be quite hard to do mentally, and we certainly we would encourage children to have a, an estimation, a sense of how large the, the answer will be. But once they've done that, to find the actual calculation, I can then split it into 100, and 50, and 6, and then multiply each part by 7. So 7 times 100 is going to give me 700. 7 times 50 is going to give me 350. And then 7 times 6 is going to give me 42. And once I've got those three parts, then I can recombine. Now, in a case like this, I could do it quite easily mentally, but some children might need the, the help of a, an addition algorithm. So we could set it out like this, 42 plus 350 plus 700, and the three separate parts are relatively easy to add together. 2 plus 90 plus 1,000, 700 and 300 giving me 1,000. So the answer to this question is 1,092. Likewise, it can be adapted to questions that involve four parts, for example, 12 times 38. Again, you would encourage children to make estimations first. But the four separate calculations, and it might be worth just reminding ourselves of these, 10 times 30, 10 times 8, 2 times 30, and 2 times 8, are more openly and visibly apparent when you set out 38 as 30 plus 8 and 12 is 10 plus 2. So now I can do each of the separate calculations. 10 times 30 gives me 300. 10 times 8 gives me 80. 2 times 30 is 60, and 2 eighths is 16. And there's several ways I could add these four subtotals together, these products. Um, I could add them vertically, or I could add them horizontally. But I'm going to set them out in a, in a an algorithm again, so 16, 80, 60, and 300. Add those together, six in the units. I've got some carrying here, so the, knowing the addition algorithm is important. 80 plus 60 is 140, plus 10 is 150, so I'm going to carry 100 into the hundreds column so that the answer is 456. And this system is just as applicable in year six because when you're, you're introducing the multiplication of decimal fractions, it's a more transparent way of, of showing that multiplication can make things smaller as well and, and certainly easier to set out. As an alternative to the grid method, many schools, um, when they're introducing the standard method, use an interim system or expanded method. So if we go back to the question we looked at earlier, 156 times 7, we can set this out in the usual way, using place volume columns. 
and many of you will be familiar with this system. But we can be slightly more transparent and honest by writing the separate calculations down at the side so that it avoids the problems of both carrying and also um, the value of the numbers being multiplied. So for example, 7 times 6 is my first calculation. The second calculation is 7 times 50. And the third calculation is 7 times 100. And once I've written those out, then I can work out the separate calculations. 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 50 is 350. And 7 times 100 is 700. Mm -hmm. And then, then it's a relatively straightforward process of adding these columns. So in the twos column I have 2, 50 and 40 make 90. And then 700 and 300 means that I go into the thousands column. So the answer is 1092. And then this should fairly straightforwardly lead into the concise method 156 times 7. The thing I need to ensure now is that I begin multiplying the units first because of the, the question of carrying. That wasn't the case before. I followed that format, but I didn't have to. So 7 times 6 is 42. I put the 2 in the units and I carry the 4 tens. Where I carry the 4 tens can vary a lot, but um, the majority of people do place it below the line. 7 times 50 is 350, plus 40 gives me 390. I carry the 300. 7 times 100 is 700, plus 300 gives me 1,000. The advantage is conciseness and speed. The disadvantages of the standard algorithm are that we have the problem of carrying and we also have the problem of remembering the size of the numbers that we're multiplying.